This video is not about an environmental issue. It's about another type of nuclear bomb. The destruction of South Africa's economy, ruining the future for generations to come. It's clear that government is planning a nuclear bomb for South Africa's economic future. Let's unpack the nuclear deal. 22nd September 2014. South Africa's Minister of Energy, Tina Jumont Pedersen, signed a Russian Intergovernmental Agreement on Strategic Partnership and Nuclear Cooperation in secret. This contract is binding for 20 years and paves the way for Rosatom to build nuclear facilities in South Africa. Rosatom is a state-owned Russian company, just like ESCOM is controlled by the government of South Africa and also notorious for mismanagement and tardiness in delivery. Internationally, the nuclear deal was revealed to the public for the first time when published on the Rosatom website and announced by the Russian media in September 2014. They retracted their statement in 2015, calling it a public relations mistake. However, Rosatom's 2014 annual report on their website tells a different story. According to SA government records, the state law advisor recommended that this agreement should be tabled for discussion in and approval by parliament under section 231.2. However, Minister Jumat Pedersen tabled it in terms of section 231.3, thereby sidestepping parliamentary debate and approval. Why did she choose to act against this advice? Who knew about this deal? The national executive, the president of the country and the cabinet certainly knew about it when they allegedly approved it on the 9th of December 2015. Why was parliament and therefore the public kept in the dark? The first time the South African public heard that the country was definitely going nuclear was on 21 December 2015. On this day, the government newspaper confirmed that the minister had approved the procurement of nuclear energy. Government's own documents clearly show that the previous Minister of Energy, Ben Martins, had already signed the determination to procure nuclear energy on 11 November 2013. When confronted about his signature, Minister Martins denied that this was discussed with him. So when did the government approve this? Somewhere between the firing of Ntlantlanene on SA's fateful D-Day, 9-12-2015 and Des Van Royen's weekend as Minister of Finance and the reappointment of Pravin Gordon. Note that both Gordon and Nene were adamant that SA cannot afford this nuclear deal. It has been suggested that Nene's dismissal is linked to his opposition to a number of deals, including the nuclear deal. His irrational dismissal and replacement with the unknown backbencher Van Royen later reported to be a Gupta favorite, has cost the country billions of rands in investment and negatively impacted on our international credit rating. If this is true, the nuclear deal has indirectly already cost South Africa billions of rands. It has further been suggested that the Gupta family's purchase of a uranium mine round about the same time could possibly also be linked to the nuclear contract. Government's ambition is an extra 9.6 gigawatts of nuclear power. The Department of Energy has been appointed to purchase and ESCOM to own and operate the nuclear power plants. On the one hand, we have Minister Jumont Peterson saying, we will only implement what our country can afford. The process is above board and free from any potential for corruption. We will not rush the process and will meet all the necessary national and international requirements for the new build process. Yet, the World Nuclear Association recently published that eight nuclear reactors have already been ordered for Tastepunt, an area in the Eastern Cape between Cape St. Francis and Oyster Bay. The area is described as the coastal cradle of humankind. 
Do not be fooled that this deal is about job creation in South Africa. It is all about money flowing offshore. Alexander Merton, president of Rosatom International Network, explicitly states that foreign currency revenue makes up 50% of Rosatom's total revenue. The goal is to strengthen Russia's global position. Since the ruble is weakening, every dollar earned is important for Russia. According to the World Nuclear Association, Russia's GDP gained 2 rubles for every 1 ruble invested in building nuclear power plants abroad last year, as well as enhanced trade. It is clear that Russia will benefit and not South Africa. But what about the additional energy? Do we really need it? Solar potential is vast compared to the energy reserves of the planet. The deployable potential of solar is larger than all other energy resources combined, both renewable and finite. Internationally, the demand for energy from finite sources like coal, uranium, petroleum and natural gas has declined. Nuclear reactors were taken offline in countries like the US and Sweden due to the high cost. More and more people are converting to green and low energy solutions and there has been a massive swell in utilizing renewable sources like solar, tidal, geothermal, etc. Independent power producers that use green technology such as wind and solar are rapidly increasing and businesses and houses are going off the grid. Technology is developing so fast and becoming cheaper so there is little need for nuclear power. Energy expert Anton Eberhardt agrees with us and says, We have already ordered more power than what we will need by 2030. The new Eskom Medupi and Kusile coal power stations will add 9.6 gigawatts, its Ingula pumped storage scheme 1.3 gigawatts. Two peaking power stations, Decisa and Avon, ordered by the Department of Energy, will add 1 gigawatt. Together, these power procurements exceed what we will need in the next 15 years. Eberhardt proposes that South Africa should avoid locking in mega capital intensive power projects. These have risks of cost overruns and long and uncertain build times, and we should rather adopt dynamic and flexible electricity planning. Is nuclear really cheaper? No, say experts at a recent international conference held in Paris. The conference addressed the challenge of financing nuclear energy in the 21st century. Findings were based on the analysis of more than 180 plants in 22 countries. The results clearly show that there is no economic case to be made for procuring the full 9.6 gigawatts of nuclear power by 2030. South Africa energy expert Chris Yelland has done the math. New wind, solar PV and gas will cost only 1 rand per kilowatt. New coal energy will cost between 1 rand 5 cents and 1 rand 19 cents per kilowatt. However, new nuclear energy will cost South Africans between 1 rand 30 cents and 1 rand 52 cents per kilowatt. It makes no sense to go nuclear. Darby Root, South African Economist of the Year, is pro-nuclear, although he has serious concerns about its economic impact. We, we don't even need a deal like this to sink the South African economy. We are already in seriously big trouble. If you add this to the economy, I'm afraid it's going to be very painful. This nuclear deal cannot happen now. You cannot go enter into an agreement with anybody else at this stage because there's too much homework that we need to complete first. It is estimated that South Africa would need to borrow 1.2 trillion rands. Do you know how much 1 trillion rand is? 1 trillion is a 1 and 12 zeros. A trillion rand is a million times a million rand. 1 trillion rand will be enough to build 100 million RDP houses. Two houses for every man, woman and child in the country. The repayments on a 1.2 trillion rand loan will be 100 billion rand per year. This would mean that South Africa will fall even further behind on the promise of supplying basic needs to every South African, where it comes to education, healthcare, 
social welfare, and public transport. This is the amount of debt that South Africa currently has. And when we borrow money for the nuclear deal from Russia and other countries, this is how much we will owe. This will be our reality. This nuclear deal will sink our country unless we stop it. Let's show you how. Several organizations like SAFSI, Southern Africa Faith Communities Environment Institute, Earthlife Africa Johannesburg and Alta want to put a stop to this unlawful deal. Show your support and help us stop this nuclear bomb.